F4U Corsair Design and Development An aircraft company better known for producing biplanes hit an aviation home run in 1938 when it unveiled the iconic design of this much-respected World War II fighter bomber. The Corsair was the Marine Corps' workhorse fighter and arguably the best fighter in World War II. But let's start from the beginning. On February 1, 1938, the United States Navy Bureau of Aeronautics requested proposals from American aircraft manufacturers for a new single-engine carrier-based fighter airplane. The Navy requested the maximum obtainable speed and a stalling speed not higher than 70 miles per hour. A range of 1,000 miles was specified. The fighter had to carry four guns or three with increased ammunition. Provision had to be made for anti-aircraft bombs to be carried in the wing. These small bombs would, according to thinking in the 1930s, be dropped on enemy aircraft formations. Development of the F-4U Corsair began in early 1938, headed up by Vought Aircraft's chief engineer Rex Beazle, who was a pioneer in the science and industry of aviation. He was the lead designer of several successful military and civilian aircraft, but his real glory was creation of the Corsair. The F-4U was the first U.S. Navy aircraft to feature landing gear that retracted into a fully enclosed wheel well, the landing gear oleo struts, each with its own strut door enclosing it when retracted, rotated through 90 degrees during retraction, with the wheel atop the lower end of the strut when retracted. A pair of rectangular doors enclosed each wheel well, leaving a streamlined wing. Reports coming back from the war in Europe indicated that an armament of 2.30-inch synchronized engine cowling mount machine guns and 2.50-inch machine guns, one in each outer wing panel, was insufficient. The U.S. Navy's November 1940 production proposals specified heavier armament, so Rex Beazle redesigned each outboard folding wing panel to carry 3.50 caliber machine guns. These guns displaced fuel tanks installed in each wing leading edge. To replace this lost capacity, a 237-gallon fuselage tank was installed between the cockpit and the engine. When the prototype was completed, it had the biggest and most powerful engine, largest propeller, and probably the largest wing on any naval fighter to date. The airplane also had another striking feature, an inverted gull-shaped bent wing. This arrangement gave additional ground clearance for the propeller and reduced drag at the wing to fuselage joint. The Corsair's aerodynamics were in advance over those of contemporary naval fighters. Test Flights Vought test pilot Lyman A. Bullard Jr. first flew the Vought XF4U-1 prototype on May 29, 1940. The R-2800 radial air-cooled engine developed 1,850 horsepower and it turned a three-blade Hamilton standard hydromatic propeller with solid aluminum blades spanning 13 feet 1 inch. On the Corsair's maiden flight, she broke the speed record for a single-seat fighter aircraft by exceeding 400 miles per hour in level flight. When naval air strategists had crafted the requirements for the new fighter, the need for speed had overridden all other performance goals. Actually, the cockpit was well back on the fuselage, creating line-of-sight issues for pilots, and the aircraft had a tendency to bounce on landing, something not desirable for aircraft carrier use. Landing techniques for the Corsair developed by the British Navy finally enabled use as a carrier aircraft. Other problems were encountered in early carrier trials. During landing approaches, it was found that oil from the opened hydraulically powered cowl flaps could spatter onto the windscreen, severely reducing visibility. And the undercarriage oleo struts had bad rebound characteristics on landing, allowing the aircraft to bounce down the carrier deck. The first problem was solved by locking the top cowl flaps in front of the windscreen down permanently, then replacing them with a fixed panel. The undercarriage bounce took more time to solve, but eventually a bleed valve incorporated in the legs allowed the hydraulic pressure to be released gradually as the aircraft landed. Formal U.S. Navy acceptance trials for the XF-4U-1 began in February 1941. The Navy entered into a letter of intent on March 3, 1941, 
received Vaught's production proposal on April 2nd and awarded Vaught a contract for 584 F4U-1 fighters on June 30th of the same year. The planes were given the name Corsair, inherited from the firm's late 1920s Vought O2U Naval Biplane Scout, which first bore the name. The first production F4U-1 performed its initial flight a year later, on June 24, 1942. It was a remarkable achievement for Vought compared to land-based counterparts, carrier aircraft are overbuilt and heavier to withstand the extreme stress of deck landings. The Corsair, even with its streamlining and high-speed abilities, could fly slowly enough for carrier landings with full-flap deployment of 60 degrees. Carrier qualification trials in the training carrier USS Wolverine and escort carriers USS Core and USS Charger in 1942 found that despite visibility issues and control sensitivity, the Corsair was an excellent carrier type and very easy to land aboard. It is no different than any other airplane. Two Navy units, VF-12 October 1942 and later VF-17 April 1943, were equipped with the F-4U. By April 1943, VF-12 had successfully completed deck landing qualifications. At the time, the U.S. Navy also had the Grumman F-6F Hellcat, which did not have the performance of the F-4U, but was a better deck landing aircraft. Combat in the Pacific The Corsair was declared ready for combat at the end of 1942, though qualified to operate only from land bases until the last of the carrier qualification issues were worked out. VF-17 went aboard the USS Bunker Hill in late 1943, and the Chief of Naval Operations wanted to equip four air groups with Corsairs by the end of 1943. The commander, Air Forces Pacific, had a different opinion, stating that in order to simplify spares problems and also to ensure flexibility in carrier operations, present practice in the Pacific is to assign all Corsairs to Marines and to equip fight rons, fighter squadrons, on medium and light carriers with Hellcats. Because of this, the first Corsairs into combat were flown with great success by land-based Marines, who later named it the Angel of Okinawa. The land-based Marines were the first U.S. forces to fly the Corsair in combat. It was not until the British proved that the Corsair could safely operate from carriers that the Navy put the type into service in January of 1944. From February 1943 onward, the F-4U operated from Guadalcanal and ultimately other bases in the Solomon Islands. The first recorded combat engagement was on February 14, 1943, when Corsairs of VMF-124 under major guise assisted P-40s and P-38s in escorting a formation of consolidated B-24 Liberators on a raid against a Japanese aerodrome at Kahili. Japanese fighters contested the raid, and the Americans got the worst of it, with four P-38s, two P-40s, two Corsairs, and two Liberators lost. No more than four Japanese Zeros were destroyed. A Corsair was responsible for one of the skills, albeit due to a mid-air collision. The fiasco was referred to as the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Despite the debut, the Marines quickly learned how to make better use of the aircraft and started demonstrating its superiority over Japanese fighters. By May, the Corsair units were getting the upper hand, and the VMF-124 had produced the first Corsair ace. Second Lieutenant Kenneth A. Walsh, later a Medal of Honor recipient, who would rack up a total of 21 kills during the war. One particularly unusual kill was scored by Marine Lieutenant R. R. Klingman of VMF-312, the checkerboards over Okinawa. Klingman was in pursuit of a Japanese twin-engine aircraft at high altitude when his guns jammed due to the gun lubrication thickening from the extreme cold. He flew up and chopped off the enemy's tail with the big propeller of the Corsair. Despite missing five inches off the end of his propeller blades, he managed to land safely after this aerial ramming attack. He was awarded the Navy Cross. Corsairs also served well as fighter bombers in the Central Pacific and the Philippines. By early 1944, 
marine pilots were beginning to exploit the types of considerable capabilities in a close support role in amphibious landings. The Corsair proved versatile, able to operate everything from bat glide bombs to 298mm Tiny Tim air-to-ground rockets. The F-4U had an immediate impact on the Pacific Air War. Unprotected by armor or self-sealing fuel tanks, no Japanese fighter or bomber could withstand for more than a few seconds the concentrated volley from the 6.50 caliber machine guns carried by a Corsair. Marine and Navy pilots flew 64,051 operational sorties, 54,470 from runways, and 9,581 from carrier decks. During the war, the British Royal Navy accepted 2,012 Corsairs, and the Royal New Zealand Air Force accepted 364. The demand was so great that the Goodyear Aircraft Corporation and the Brewster Aeronautical Corporation also produced the F-4U. On September 2, 1945, the Navy credited Corsair pilots with destroying 2,140 enemy aircraft in aerial combat. The Navy and Marines lost 189 F-4Us in combat and 1,435 Corsairs in non-combat accidents. Pappy Boyington and Lucky Lindbergh on September 7, 1943, Major Gregory Pappy Boyington assumed command of Marine Corsair Squadron VMF-214, nicknamed the Black Sheep Squadron. In fewer than five months of action, Boyington received credit for downing 28 enemy aircraft. The Corsairs flown by VMF-214 were seldom flown by the same pilot every day. In fact, Pappy would always fly the plane in the poorest condition on every mission just so a pilot under his command wouldn't have to do so. Enemy aircraft shot him down on January 3, 1944, but he survived the war in a Japanese prison camp. In May and June 1944, Charles A. Lindbergh, nicknamed Lucky Lindy, the first person to fly solo across the Atlantic, flew Corsair missions with Marine pilots at Green Island and a mural. On September 3, 1944, Lindbergh demonstrated the F-4U's bomb-hauling capacity by flying a Corsair from Marine Air Group 31, carrying three bombs, each weighing 1,000 pounds. He dropped this load on enemy positions at Watch Atoll. On September 8, Lindbergh dropped the first 2,000-pound bomb during an attack on the Atoll. For the finale, five days later, the transatlantic flyer delivered a 2,000-pound bomb and 1,000-pound bombs. Lindbergh went ahead and flew these missions after the commander of MAG-31 informed him that if he were forced down and captured, the Japanese would almost certainly execute him. Korea and Beyond During the Korean War, the F-4U was used mostly in a close support role. The Corsair could loiter over an area longer when providing low-level close air support. The versions of the Corsair used in Korea from 1950 to 1953 were the AU-1, F-4U-4B, 4P, 5N, and 5NL. There were dogfights between F-4Us and Soviet-built Yakolev Yak-9 fighters early in the war. But when the enemy introduced the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15, the Corsair was outmatched. F-4U-5N and 5NL Corsair night fighters were used to attack enemy supply lines, including truck convoys and trains, as well as to interdict night attacked aircraft such as the Polycarpov Po-2 Bedchek Charlies, which were used to harass United Nations forces at night. Lieutenant Guy Bordelon of VC-3 Detachment D off USS Princeton became the Navy's only ace in the war. In addition to being the only American ace in Korea, that used a piston-engined aircraft. Bordelon, nicknamed Lucky Pierre, was credited with three Lavochkin LA-9s or LA-11s and two Yakolev Yak-18s between June 29 and July 16 and 17, 1952. Navy and Marine Corsairs were credited with a total of 12 enemy aircraft. The Corsair was nicknamed Whistling Death by ground troops because of its distinctive sound when in attack mode at lower altitudes. F-4Us, the last to be produced, 
also saw an anti-communist role when they were used by France during the First Indonesia War, and some remained in French military service to the 1960s. From the first prototype delivery to the U.S. Navy in 1940, to final delivery in 1953 to the French, 12,571 F4U Corsairs were manufactured in 16 separate models. Their 1942 to 1953 production run was the longest of any U.S. piston engine fighter. If you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release new episodes. For more interesting military history content, check out our video library.